Okay, so this is a, a paper that is uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, that, that's me there, one of the authors. Um, okay, so let's start with the problem. Um, this is a problem that uh, MSN News, uh, Microsoft News has, um, and uh, they wanted to personalize the choice of news article which is being displayed to users. So uh, you observe a feature, uh, you observe a user, you have some articles which are in a pool, you want to choose which one to actually display to a user, and then you observe whether or not there's a, a click. Uh, and your goal is to kind of maximize the number of clicks. It's a very straightforward thing. Okay, so um, this, this is a real problem. Uh, this is the MSN webpage, um, not current, some time ago. Uh, but there are several pieces of that webpage which are now optimized. And so what I want to talk to you about is a system for, doing, for solving this kind of problem and how this differs from other kinds of machine learning systems. Okay, so when we did this, it, there were tens of millions of users. Uh, there's about a five minute machine learned model update frequency. Actually, can I get a check? How many people have played with machine learning at all? Fair number, good. So uh, usually, well, we'll get into more details about what machine learning is like. Uh, so this is, this is a very fast model update frequency. Uh, this is the deployed model in production. Uh, and there was a greater than 25% increase in the number of clicks. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's, that's nice. It worked well. Okay, so now let me tell you how to not do it, but what is the conventional wisdom for how to solve this problem. Okay, so the conventional wisdom is you take uh, you, you have some existing system, it's collecting data, you instrument to collect data, uh, you observe, uh, let's see if I can, uh, oh well. Okay, so you observe the user, uh, the article that was displayed to them, and whether or not they clicked on it, and then you build uh, some sort of features of the user in the article. These are the inputs to the machine learning algorithm. And then, uh, and then you use machine learning. And you use machine learning to predict the probability of a click uh, given the features in the article and the user implicitly. Okay, so once you have this probability of click, what you do is you turn this into a policy about what you choose to display by just taking the argmax over the articles of the probability of the click. Okay, so this is the standard thing that you might try to do. And then you would deploy this in an A-B test for a couple weeks and then uh, you would fail, and you would fail very badly here. Um, and now there's kind of a question about why you would fail. Um, and there's several answers for why you would fail, but the most fundamental answer is, is that you are blind. And, and the reason why you are blind is because you don't know whether or not a user would have clicked on an article that you didn't display to them. Right? So there's a, there's a counterfactual estimate that you really need in order to gather the information to solve the problem efficiently, or, or even effectively. So this is not a problem of the amount of data that you have. This is a problem of having the wrong data. If it is the case that you display news articles about Trump to me, I may or may not click on them, this gives you no information about whether or not I would click about an article about the war in Ukraine. My wife is from Ukraine. So I would actually click on that article. But you would not know that depending upon whether or not I clicked on an, an article about, about Trump. So th this, this kind of lack of information is kind of core to the problem that comes up. There's a couple other things which make this problem very difficult. One of them is that uh, this is a very non-stationary uh, problem. So the set of news articles which is of interest on a in given day may differ on the next day and certainly will differ on the day after that. So the, uh, the choice of which model you want to use tends to drift rather quickly compared to many other applications. That makes it extra hard. Okay, so 
the combination of these two effects, I think, is, is pretty, it shows an extreme. But I think there's a lot of other problems which kind of have the same uh, structure. So the structure where uh, you go out, you make a decision, you get, some, you get some information, you make a decision based upon that, and then you get feedback about the decision that you actually made. So uh, maybe you're trying to optimize the landing page for ads. Or maybe you're trying to figure out when you should reboot a virtual machine that's become non-responsive. Or maybe you're trying to read somebody's mind with an EEG, and you want to know if they're trying to, to, to uh, think the letter E or the letter A, or T, right? So all of these are sort of possibilities where you can, there's some way to get feedback, but you need to actually be learning fairly effectively, fairly quickly, based upon the sort of partial information feedback where you only know about the decisions that you actually made. Okay, so this is the kind of problem that we're trying to solve. Uh, and, and the key difference is that you need to realize that, that you have to explore over different alternatives. You have to actually explore that news article about Ukraine, perhaps, in order to discover that I have an interest in Ukraine. Okay, so um, most people who've done machine learning are used to supervised learning. This is where some of the big successes have occurred. Right? So there's ImageNet where people recognize uh, objects and images very effectively, and that's been a huge success. There's a number of other uh, kind of canonical supervised learning problems that people have carefully posed and set up where they, they pay people to label this is the right answer and that is the wrong answer. And then you have a very large number of other problems which are of this sort where you only get feedback about the choice that you actually make. Okay, so this is a contextual bandit problem. Um, it's kind of a simplification of reinforcement learning if you're aware of that. The simplification is that you know that this reward here is associated with that action in that context. So there's no ambiguity about which action led to the reward. Okay, so that, 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 that simplification makes it dramatically easier to solve. You can solve in the same, uh, so again, if you're familiar with reinforcement learning, um, okay, so let's, let's do reinforcement learning for a minute. Um, fun stuff, AlphaGo, uh, Atari mind uh, playing games. Um, so there's a lot of fun things you can do, especially with a simulator using reinforcement learning for generalized decision making. Now the problem with trying to apply reinforcement learning in the real world is that um, the number of samples that you need to actually learn tends to be extremely high. So having something, making things simpler or easier somehow is, is really critical to having a good success. Uh, so we're gonna make things simpler by saying that for this context, th these features, uh, if you choose this action, this is the reward that you get. And, and the reward associated with that action in that context. Okay, so uh, the goal here is to maximize expected reward, which could be the, the number of clicks. Um, okay, so this is, this is a problem that's been studied for a while in, in academia. So there were, the first algorithms for this were actually in 95. This is an amazing paper. Um, and then there were various papers talking about how to kind of reduce this to supervised learning. So you could take your existing supervised learning algorithm and apply it to solve these kinds of problems. And um, yeah, there's more work, efficient algorithms, uh, both efficient computation and statistically op algorithms, how to evaluate things offline. There's a lot of different work here. Not very important about the details unless you start trying to solve these problems. And then this paper is the one that I'm really talking about now. Right, so uh, I, I gave this talk once and, and somebody's comment was, you forgot some letters. <laughs> okay, so what goes wrong when you try to do contextual bandits by yourself? I would say that trying to do contextual bandits by yourself is actually much harder than trying to do supervised learning by yourself. And, and the key thing is that you have all these information flows running around and you have to get them right or else it won't work right. Um, so I've been in organizations where you know, different parts of the information flow were kind of owned by different people who didn't work together and that was, that was bad. Um, I've, been in, I've seen situations where um, you have a pipeline of a sequence of decisions that's getting made that finally influences the final news article displayed. And now 
instead of recording the action that you took at the little piece of the pipeline that you controlled, you instead recorded the final outcome. And then that will mess everything up because, uh, I mean, you won't even know how your control affects the final outcome, right? Um, sometimes people don't log the features because they go, oh, I will log an index into a database, but then the database itself ages and then uh, you can't recover the state at the time that you would have to do the prediction. And so you can't, there's a mismatch between, uh, between what you train against and what you predict against so that maybe in training it appears great, but in prediction it, it's terrible. Um, there's a lot of other things that I've seen go wrong along these lines. So you wanna have a system which has integrity in the, in the way the information flows so that, so that you will have uh, something that's reproducible and something that sh where the, the predicted performance that you get when you're running offline actually matches the performance that you observe in practice. So that's what this paper is about. It's how to create a system which avoids all of these bugs right here. And any one of these bugs could cripple a project, set, set you behind by three months or, or whatever. Okay, so what does this look like? Um, there's, there's a a loop that gets created for you. Uh, you interact with the uh, exploration library. So you send in the context, which is the features. Uh, you get back a decision. And then as a side effect, you have the features X, the action A, the probability of exploring that action A, and a join key, which gets sent off to a join server. And then later on, when you observe the outcome, was there a click or, or no click, that's also sent with, a, with the key to the join server. So these are joined together at the join server, and then the output is these quads. So you have, you have the, the, the joining happen, so you have the features, the action, the probability of exploring that action in the join key. Then you have the reward in the join key. You join those, and then you get a new quad, which is the features, the action, the probability of the action, and then the, the reward for, for that outcome. That's the critical information you need to push into a learning algorithm for this setting. So you feed that into an online learning algorithm, and then uh, you actually learn online, checkpointing the model periodically to push into the front end. So that allows you to um, learn in near real time. And uh, so that it deals with the non-stationarity of the original problem. And it also deals with this necessity of having some amount of exploration in order to discover the plausible different alternatives. OK, so, um, <clears throat> so this works pretty well. We actually have a number of different people using this same core system now. Uh, this was released as a uh, custom decision service at Microsoft Build uh, last month. And um, I don't know what else I want to say. Oh, I'm talking about this in much more detail at QCon uh, on Wednesday at 410. Are there questions? Yeah. Ah, why, why do I call it Vocal Wallet? So the core algorithms are all open source and they're in a online learning system which, uh, which I've been working on for about the last 10 years. It's called Vocal Wallet. And uh, okay, so uh, I was feeling cute at the time. Uh, there's actually three different things embedded in that. So there's this sort of Elmer Fudd. Uh, okay, so there's also uh, in Jabberwocky, there's the Vorpal Sword, right? And then, and then in Monty Python, in the search for the Holy Grail, there's the rabbit. And I still find that one very hilarious. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh. Yeah. It was really a 25% increase, and that's an underestimate of what actually happened. 
it, it was a big difference. It, it, uh, it was a pay for the lab kind of difference. <laughs> One in the back. Yeah. Yeah, so a filter bubble is something to be concerned about in general, but it, it's not in this particular case uh, because there are editors who are choosing the pool of articles to display. And so uh, it, it's not a particularly large pool, so it doesn't, it's not big enough to even support a filter bubble in this case. I think in general, so, so one thing which is important to understand is the difference between this system and kind of more classical recommender systems. Right, so in more classical recommender systems, maybe you're trying to choose a uh, product from amongst 10,000 products, which you might also want to buy if you bought this other product, right? Um, that's not what this is really for. Um, so the decision service is really about contextual control over a relatively small number of plausible alternatives. So you might put these together, you might have a a, a recommendation system which recommends something and you take the top 10 or 20 and then the decision service optimizes over that very carefully with context. So that the, see, the, the classical recommendation systems are not, typically not very good at taking context into account. So this, allow, this is a way to, to take a lot of context information into account amongst a relatively small number of alternatives in a manner which deals with all kinds of presentation bias or, or other kinds of bias. I think that's going to be about it. Thank you so much, you. John. Sorry for the malfunction there at the end.